What's up, everybody? If you want to join the greatest online Star Wars community, the Fandom Menace, make sure you hit that subscribe button before today's video starts so you don't miss out on any updates and you're always the first to know when our newest videos go live. The Disney Dynasty is on the decline, and I, for one, am delighted. My distaste for the mouse runs about as deep as the Mariana Trench, and if they, Disney, pronouns pal, keep up on their current trajectory, will breach the Earth's core, and that, that's, that's just terrible. I could list all the BS that Disney gets away with, and we could sit here until the election in 2024, but I'll spare you that. Today, we're going to focus on Disney's epic fail that was their attempt to dominate the Chinese market much like that country likes to dominate the spirit of their people. It started last year with this. After the trailer for Mulan dropped, we got our first look at what would become the most damning Disney film in history. Shortly after the trailer dropped, people began questioning Disney's motives with the film. It's no surprise that Disney goes where the money is. It's worked very well for them historically. But with China, trying to break into that market is like getting blood from a stone. It worked for Marvel, and we'll talk more about that in a bit, but it didn't end well for Star Wars and cost Disney whatever was left of their integrity in the process. Again, something we'll come back to later on. After the Mulan trailer dropped, people started to notice what Disney's secret plan was and instantly called them out on it. Was it enough to change everything? No, but it was enough to get people thinking. And honestly, in the world we live in today, getting people to think is a Herculean feat. By the way, when the inevitable live-action remake of Hercules gets made, if Idris Elba isn't Hercules, I'm boycotting due to racism. But back to Mulan. Over at The Guardian, this article popped up, shining a little light on the then-upcoming propaganda piece, Disney's Mulan. The Mulan trailer is a dismal sign Disney is bowing to China's nationalistic agenda. Disney have just released their hotly anticipated trailer for the live-action remake of Mulan, the 1998 animated musical action film. To say I was excited by the prospect of a live-action Mulan is an understatement. The film joins the plethora of live-action remakes from Disney's 90s renaissance hits, including Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, and The Lion King. All of these retain their musical numbers. Why then has Disney decided to make Mulan a gritty, realist film, particularly considering there are already Chinese versions of The Legend of General Hu Mulan, 1964, and Mulan The Rise of a Warrior from 2009? The Disney remake came under intense scrutiny the moment it was announced, with commentators warning against whitewashing and protesting at the removal of the army captain Li Shang in the absence of the original songs. Although you can't judge a film by its trailer, the muted, unhumorous tone of this teaser hints at the film's objective. Mulan is no longer a self-conscious teenager who disappoints her parents by failing to become the ideal wife before her fierce and beautiful transformation into the woman she wants to be. Instead, she appears solemn and resolute. Mulan is now a robotic warrior. The removal of the songs is a big mistake. It eliminates the joy and emotional heart that Disney did so well. I can't help but wonder why Disney are remaking Mulan at all if they are simply going to pander to the nationalistic views espoused by the mainland Chinese government especially as it looks exactly like the kind of imperial dramas that the state media are currently taking aim at. No doubt Disney will have in mind the commercial failure in China of 1998's Mulan. It was caught up in the controversy over the Disney-funded film Kundun about the Dalai Lama, which led to the Chinese government effectively banning Disney films. The timing of this trailer release is awful, with the recent events in Hong Kong culminating in police brutality against the anti-extradition bill. It feels like Disney is waving a big red flag in everyone's face in its desperation to secure its success at the Chinese box office. For those who believe in democracy and freedom, this leaves a sour taste. How's the old phrase go? If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Clearly, the animated Mulan flopping in China stuck in their crawl for over two decades. Disney is the awkward loser and China is their high school crush. She wants nothing to do with him and blows him off, and not in the way he was dreaming. Years later, after this dweeby motherfucker made it big, he returns to his high school reunion to see her, Mulan. She looks okay, the years haven't been the kindest, but this dork still holds the flame. He has the nerve to talk to her, and she responds in kind, but she's married. After that one conversation, he changes everything about himself just to be like the guy she married. It ultimately fails. She stays with her husband because she never liked our dorky hero in the first place. She had her own man. It was a futile effort. This is exactly what happened with Disney in China. As I said at the beginning of this video, it goes deeper than just one film. Disney will shove John Boyega's fin under the bus and all but remove him from the Chinese poster of The Force Awakens. But here in America, Black Lives Matter. Same with the lesbian kiss and the rise of Skywalker. Here in America, Disney acts as if every day is part of Pride Month. But abroad, that scene is mysteriously absent. Hmm. It's almost like in the West, Disney likes to promote change. But when it comes time to actually act, they get stage fright. Actually, stage fright isn't a good phrase. Let's call it what it truly is. Cowardice. 
Disney was never an agent of change. They just want money from as many people as possible. So they'll lie through their teeth to get everyone on board, but then secretly remove their offensive content on a case-by-case -case basis. They have no conviction. This recent push to aggressively enter China really stems from the major dollar signs Disney saw from the Marvel movies. But even there, they're not innocent. Did you know that Marvel still censors their movies for China too? This came out from CNET last year while everyone was still riding the high from Endgame. Now let's take it back to the reason why we're all here. Mulan, and Disney's most recent ethics flush. This year started with a virus from China ruining the world, and now we have another one in the form of this film. Most stories have a good guy and a bad guy, or a hero and a villain for the gender obsessed. But this is the story of two assholes, a tale of two shitties. Disney and China. One does terrible things and the other excuses terrible things for money. Is one more guilty than the other? That's for you to decide. I'm just here to lay out what the wonderful world of Disney will do to get into the cavernous cove of Chinese cash. Apparently offending someone is the biggest concern for Disney. The way they handle this is by removing any flavor from their content, any fun. You know, I wasn't a fan of Mulan back in 1998. I thought Mulan was a girl's movie. But the things I remember from the film are the songs and Eddie Murphy. That's why Disney removed them from the film. Fun isn't promoted in China. Did Disney jump the gun? Yes, they did. Disney tried to be culturally sensitive about a topic that's not sensitive in the first place. Their attempt at reverence fell flat on its face after the citizens of China spoke out against Disney's interpretation of Mulan. Why are people acting like Chinese people don't want Mushu? The first trending topic on Weibo, which is the Chinese equivalent of Twitter, is Mushu not in Mulan. People want a Disney fairy tale, not a documentary. I see a lot of people speaking on behalf of Chinese people despite not knowing what we want. Besides, Mulan is a legend, not a historical figure. It's up for interpretation. That's what's great about the 1998 movie. It's a child-friendly, fun interpretation of a legend. There's already a super serious, super historical version that was made by China. Here are some examples of their post. I can't be bothered to translate them all, but the general sentiment is, where's Mushu? So first faux pas, Disney made an assumption, and you know what that means. That means they screwed up pretty badly. The parts of the film they removed are the most memorable ones. That'd be like, I don't know, they removed the cantina from Star Wars because Obi-Wan Kenobi cuts an arm off, and that's not family friendly. And even the small percentage of the Chinese audience that saw the film were perplexed by the absence. I find it incredibly interesting to see what actual Chinese people are saying, and I find it even more interesting that Disney was completely tone deaf to the matter. Good job, Disney! The tweet besides Mulan is a legend, not a historical figure, it's up for interpretation, that's what's great about the 1998 movie, really hits the nail on the head as to what Disney was missing. China has its own version of historical Mulan. China already has its own film industry. And we have learned as of late, much to Disney's chagrin, China tends to prefer their own shit. So again, Disney is left there holding its limp noodle. But hey, at least they like the casting choice for Mulan, right? Maybe last year, but not anymore. Hashtag boycott Mulan was trending earlier this year, and if you missed it, it's probably because the world took a big ol' Amber Heard and shit the bed in 2020. Here's a brief explanation. Why people are calling to hashtag boycott Mulan, and what it has to do with the Hong Kong protests. The release of Disney's live-action remake of Mulan comes at a difficult time for the studio, with the coronavirus epidemic potentially taking its biggest international market, Chinese moviegoers, off the table. Oh, article, that's not what took Chinese audiences off the table. But Mulan is facing more than one viral obstacle to its success. The film is also the target of a hashtag boycott Mulan movement that has taken over Twitter, sparked by stars Li Yifei's comments on the ongoing Hong Kong protests last year. As with many films heavily associated with China, it's about to get political, folks. Here's the hashtag Boycott Mulan movement and its connection to the Hong Kong protest and police brutality explained. In February of 2019, the government of Hong Kong proposed the Fugitive Offenders Amendment Bill, which would allow the extradition of criminal fugitives to mainland China. This sparked a wave of protests from Hong Kong residents who saw this as the beginning of the end for the region's relative autonomy. Since 1997, Hong Kong had enjoyed relative freedom under the One Country, Two Systems Agreement, which allowed the city a high degree of autonomy for 50 years, a deal that would end in 2047. Now at the halfway mark, mainland Chinese government aka the People's Republic of China, have been getting bolder. One such bold action from the mainland government was the Fugitive Offenders Bill. The Fugitive Offenders Bill would essentially give the mainland Chinese government greater power over Hong Kong residents, allowing them to extradite supposed criminals from Hong Kong to be tried in mainland China, even if it was just a matter of speaking out against censorship laws. These disappearances had already begun happening for years, but this bill would make it legal in Hong Kong. The Hong Kong protests began in March of 2019 and escalated from there. The Hong Kong police were recorded on camera using brutal methods against the protesters deploying tear gas and rubber bullets. Two students died, and an unnamed protester was shot. The protests have not been resolved in the years since they began. So how did Mulan star Li Yifei get involved with all of this? 
The Chinese-born actress spoke out in support of the Hong Kong police in August of 2019 amid the allegations of police brutality. I support the Hong Kong police. You all can attack me now. What a shame for Hong Kong, Lu posted on Weibo, a Chinese social media platform similar to Twitter. The backlash was immediate. Hashtag Boycott Mulan began trending on Twitter, a social media app that has been banned in China. Soon the hashtag was trending in Hong Kong and the United States with Twitter users accusing the actress of supporting police brutality. Protesters also criticized her for wading into the conversation when she has no stake as an American citizen. Liu is a naturalized American citizen. It must be nice. Meanwhile, she pisses on people fighting for democracy, one person said. So, here we are. It got political and that's why it failed. If that was the extent of this controversy surrounding Mulan, then I wouldn't be making this video. But I am, so something had to change, right? Right. Mulan saw a series of release date changes due to the current pandemic. Initially, Mulan was supposed to be released in November of 2018, but the Nutcracker took that spot. So Mulan was moved to March of 2020. Then July of 2020. Then August of 2020. And then... Well, no and then. It was announced on August 4th that Mulan would skip the theaters in the West and be released on Disney Plus on September 4th at a $30 premium. So that was easy to follow, right? The TLDR version of those three sentences is, Mulan has been moved around the Disney release calendar for nearly two years, and it finally went direct to video, or streaming today, in the West because of the Rona. So now that the film has been released, we've now reached the natural conclusion of our story. Hell no we haven't! This is where it starts to get really, really good. So as of this recording, Mulan sits at 75% from critics and a 51% from audiences. Now this isn't The Last Jedi with a 50% difference between critics and the audience, but it's telling of the lack of enthusiasm people had for Mulan. There have been droves of people complaining about Disney's live-action remakes since they started making them years ago. Some are big hits, and others aren't. Mulan is the latter. What really sets Mulan apart from the rest of the pack was the controversy. The old adage, there's no such thing as bad press, does not apply here. I'd love to give you examples, but there's just so many. I don't know where to start. So, I guess we'll just start here. Calls to boycott Mulan reignite over star support for Hong Kong police. Since we've already covered that, we don't need to go into any more detail, but uh, her comments aren't going away anytime soon. Now this puts Disney in a situation they've never been in before. How to handle political backlash in a country where calling your opposition racist homophobes doesn't work. This goes deeper than that, and Disney, this is a situation you should have avoided. Ooh, here's another one. Disney's Mulan, criticized by Chinese viewers for depicting culture, history, and an inauthentic way. Critics pointed out inaccuracies, such as the use of Southern Style House, when Mulan is likely from the North, and the depiction of Ki as a power only boys should wield, when in fact there is no such gender restriction. Some called the makeup and costumes ugly and inauthentic. It was said that the film comes off more like a European fantasy than a Chinese story, and noted that the film's crew was mostly white, including the director, four screenwriters, and costume designers. But it was directed by a woman! Aren't your concerns invalidated by the fact that a woman directed this film? A woman? China doesn't give a shit. Why should we? They didn't really get any Chinese people on the writing staff, and it really showed, she said. Jeanette Ng, a Chinese fantasy writer based in the United Kingdom, said the film perpetuates a narrative of China's majority Han people that assimilates and excludes minorities such as Mongolians, Tibetans, and Huigars. The mainland Chinese people aren't the mainland Chinese viewers from 20 years ago, she said of the lukewarm response. The culture has moved on. Her comments mirror the latest in a series of controversies that have hit the film outside of mainland China. So for all this talk of cultural sensitivity, respecting legacy, etc., Disney sure as hell didn't do their homework. They're kind of playing into the self-fulfilling prophecy of live-action remakes or a lazy cash grab. So if you thought this was it, you'd be sorely mistaken. It gets worse. Much worse. Disney likes to take the moral high ground. They want to throw around their weight and use progress as an excuse. They took Lee Shang out of the film because of the Me Too movement. Talk about being afraid of a non-existent controversy, Disney. Disney was also focused on the diversity of the production team. Again, a non-existent controversy, Disney. Mulan has a message. Serve China and forget about the Uyghurs. Disney's live-action remake was filmed partially in Jiangjiang amid mass human rights abuses. All art is political. Strangely, Disney's live-action Mulan is more obviously so than most. Mulan makes the current nationalist mythology of Han-dominated China the foundation of its story. That would be bad enough, while parts were also filmed in the location of the current ongoing mass human rights abuses, including cultural genocide against ethnic minorities. The credits of Mulan specifically thank the publicity department of the Chinese Communist Party's Zhangjiang Yugar Autonomous Region Committee, as well as the Public Security Bureau in the city of Turpan and other state entities there. 
The Public Security Bureau is one of the main forces administering the internment camps, enforcing the surveillance and interrogation, and even nominally free Uyghurs forcing people into slave labor, demanding that the Uyghurs host Han guests employed by the government to spy on them, and sterilizing Uyghur women. The publicity department, a term that used to be more honestly translated as propaganda department, justifies these atrocities. Most of these policies were well in place, and some of them known in the West, by the time the film was shot partially in Jiangjiang in 2018. That should be the only thing that needs to be written. But there's more. Oh, there will be more! But let's take a detour into what they mean by atrocities. The world is a messed up place and will continue to be a messed up place as long as people are looking for two things. Money and power. Disney wants money and China has power and both are in bed together. We just read that Mulan was filmed during a time where a lot of the world knew about these government practices. But Disney still moved forward. By willingly moving forward, they low-key endorsed cultural genocide. Think I'm being hyperbolic? Let's take a look. And folks, you'll have to come back next time. I know, I know. But like The Rock says, always leave him wanting more. And you're definitely going to want more because next time we're going to get into a little more detailed analysis of human rights violations as well as Disney getting their comeuppance. So part two is going to make everyone happy. After spending part one being angered at what's going on with Mulan, well, this story has a happy ending and it's not the way you think. So folks on the way out, hit that thumbs up button and let us know that you like what we do here on the channel. And uh, tell us down in the comments what you think of this situation. I know some of this news has been out there for a couple of days now, but we're piecing it all together because this is a time capsule of everything that led to Mulan's demise. So we will release part two of this next week, but if the demand for this is high, something like half of our audience watches this, and we'll look at the subscriber numbers. If half the audience watches this, I can get this ready by Wednesday because, you know, part two is ready. You're probably wondering yourself, Jeff, if part two is ready, why are you making us wait? Well, this was an hour and 10 minute recording session, and for some reason, YouTube doesn't like the long videos. So we broke it down to make it more digestible since there's a ton of stuff going on in the world that you gotta keep up with. But we wanna make it as convenient as possible to hang out with your buddies here at World Class Bullshitter so we can keep you up to date on all the information that's going on in the pop culture world. Now, if you're a patron, we will release all of this audio over there on Patreon by the 7th of October. So if you can't wait, well, go over there and check it out. So. Folks, let me know that you like these by helping us get the numbers up and we can get more of these out all the time. I really love taking the deep dives like this because it's piecing everything together. The world, all of these stories isn't some crazy conspiracy. It's a big puzzle. And once you piece everything together, you get the whole picture. And now we have all of the pieces for Mulan and I'm putting all the pieces together for you to show you exactly what went down, why it went down, and the manner it went down. The truth is always stranger than fiction. If you would have told me last year everything that went on in 2020, I wouldn't have believed you. But if you tell me this is only the beginning and shit's about to get really crazy, well, I'm willing to believe anything at this point. So if you got a bridge to sell me, please, my checkbook is open right for you. And folks, on your way out, make sure you're still subscribed with your bell notification turned on to all. Not for our egos, but YouTube has been nefarious with unsubscribing a lot of people, and people have been reaching out, wondering where we are. Well, we're here. Always. So folks, come back every Monday morning, 11.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for a brand new video here on World Class Bullshitters. And uh, like I said, help this one get the views quick, and part two will be out on Wednesday, October the 7th. So thank you for watching, folks. I know shit's a little crazy. I know this story's crazy. Everyone has a different reaction to everything. But I am going to ask that everybody do one thing. What is it? It's simple. Let's go out into the world and be excellent to each other.